Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mo's and today's episode we're going to be taking a little look at a, a little generator I picked up, a little two-stroke generator, you know the type of thing. I've got one down here somewhere which my snobby scrapbooker give me, which I'm going to keep myself. Um, but this little one I'm going to try and uh, push out if I can. I picked it up from my usual recycling centre and um, as far as I'm aware it's, it's a non-running machine. But however, we don't know yet. I should put some petrol on it and we'll try it and see what happens. Uh, this is your first time watching Mixed Mo's, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, hit notifications to all, that way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night weekly live stream which starts at 6.30pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get down on dirty and let's try and get this little tiny generator to fire up and power something. Okay, so here's a little generator. It's a little um, petrol generator, NJH780WG, 780 water. It says to use 40 to one in the winter, 50 to one in the summer. Not seen that before. Normally they all say 50 to one, but uh, hey ho. Um, not trying to start it at all. It's just been sat in the old mixed mower shack doing nothing. Uh, comes with a little mixing cup as well, so you can mix your fuel up. The tank is empty. I've got a little bit of fuel in, not a lot. This is 40 to one, so it won't, it won't really matter just for starting up processes. We'll put that straight in. That'd be enough just to wet its whistle, just to see if a carb is gonna do anything. It may just fire straight up, people. I've, with what luck I've been having on the mowers as of late from the same place, <clears throat> it may just fire straight on up. Maybe the generator's actually, actually tired itself. We don't yet know. So there's a fuel on off tap around this side. I think fuel on, uh, it's not very well written on here. I think fuel on would be that way, like so. Now on some of these little generators, there's normally a little tiny place to put a, a screwdriver in to uh, ask for fuel, but I'm not seeing that on this one. Oh, there's a little tiny screw down there. A little tiny, I don't know if I can get a screwdriver in there. We'll try but uh, it doesn't look very hopeful for me. What I'm after is my extra long reach screwdriver. That's what I'm after, I can't find it at the moment. I had it out yesterday. So it is about, there's a little tiny bleeding screw down here, which, which you can't get to. So what I normally do with these is I drill a little hole in the side of this casing, just so we can access it a bit later on. So what I'm gonna do is, it's only plastic, there's nothing behind there. I'm gonna get my drill. I'm just going to drill a little tiny hole just in the side of this casing, just so I can access the, 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 the screw hole for, for bleeding purposes. They don't uh, allow you to get in there uh, beforehand. So just literally just line it up roughly where it is. It's going to be about there, right down the bottom it's going to be. It's going to be about there. I'm going to tip it up a touch just to get in. Just there, a little tiny screw out, make it a bit neat and mix. That's it. Just so I can get a screwdriver in there, that's all it is. Because uh, sometimes these little, these little gravity fed generators, they need to have a bit of fuel assistance on them. So now I'll get my screwdriver in line it up with a hole, and it would be a flathead, wouldn't it? Normally they're Phillips. And I'll get a little flathead in there. I can line it up with a the, with the carby, and just unscrew that, and just have a little fill. Yeah, I've got fuel coming down. I'm gonna drain some of that fuel out. That's yellow as anything. Just keep going until I get some decent fuel through. It's yellow in color, and don't look very nice. I'm not getting no fresh fuel through yet. Oh, it smells like, it smells like vinegar. Doesn't let that run best I can. I'll turn it tap the other way. See what happens. I know I'm spilling fuel on the bench, that's no biggie for me. Oh, 
Just want to see if I can get anything to come out. Let's screw that back in now. That should give it enough, enough opportunity to um, bring some fuel down, if I can get any fuel down through that carby. Let's clean that fuel up. There's no naked flames in here anyway, so no biggie. Right, with a bit of fuel now poured down, let's put it onto choke, which is already on choke. It's in the on position already, so someone's already looks like they've given up with it already. Let's give it a couple of pulls and see what it do. Nothing. I'm convinced I'm not getting, actually getting the right amount of the right fuel down. Is what, I'm, is what I'm thinking. It doesn't seem to be bringing fuel down in the clean context I would like. That's a bit more watery now, so yeah, that's fresh fuel coming down now. So now I'm getting fresh fuel coming down. Let me now turn that off. I wasn't getting fresh fuel I am now. I'm sure that's in the on position. Can't really see the markings. That could be on that way. That's on that way there. So on is up which is weird because it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's flowing right. So now I've got fresh fuel coming down. Let's give it a go now, see what it do. Nothing. Let's spin it round. We'll have that, uh, that pull cut with that uh, spark plug out. See if we've got a little spark coming off of it. Looks like a relatively new plug. I wouldn't say it's brand new, but it looks relatively new. Yeah, not bad at all. So let's uh, put that into there. And we'll earth that out. On there. I'm gonna spin it round. You guys won't see it, but I will. Yeah, I've got a spark. So there's a bit of a spark there going on. Let's get a bit of carby spray. Put it down set out and put the plug back in. And see so it can't get it just go bang. It may it may just pick itself up now. If not, nine times out of ten, these little, these little generators they, they need a carburetor cleaning. In my experience with them. So what I got from Snob, um, it's a bit smoky to be fair. So I'm not really going to sell it on. But it'll do me just right in the garden and bits and pieces. Right, let's try that to see if it'll fire. It's to definitely turned on. Just want to just go bang, that's all. And I go bang. And that's it. So it definitely is a carburetor he's doing. To do the carburetors on these, relatively simple. Two flathead screws, bolts, to come out on the front panel. With those two bolts out, you can then remove this front said panel. That comes off. Got a little air filter there as well. And then you've got a couple of 10 mils to remove. One here, one here, and one here. So let's grab a 10 mil. That'd be a 10 on a reasonable extension on an impact. The first two, remove your carburetor bolts. And then you've got one over here, which just holds the plate into place. With those bolts out, I believe, you can now remove the front panel. Very, very gently. Move a carby onto, onto run. That should remove. Just double checking behind here, there's nothing going to trip me up. A few wires, but that should come out a bit further than that. One wire's just come off. 
a little short black wire. I'm going to remove the brown wire too. That goes on the bottom of the on off switch. Just for reference, black on the top, brown on the bottom. And then I can then bring this panel around. Now, they don't give you as much wire as what's in on the old versions of these. So I'll bring you in a bit closer so you can get a bit of a better look. Right, I've got you in as close as I can. Uh, to remove this carby, uh, it's quite simple. It's, all, it's already been loosened off because of the bolts I've removed off of it anyway. You've got a fuel line to remove just here. Um, you've got a governor spring to remove just here, and that carby should just, just pop off. Okay, like so. So we're going to move this, this um, clamp first. A pair of long nose snips will do that quite well. <clears throat> it would be right around, around the wrong way, wouldn't it? So I can't get hold of it. Let's just bring it around a touch. That's better. Now I can get hold of it. Lift that up. Off comes the fuel line. And you've got a little tiny um, governor uh, rod here. Now I have found these are, these are quite tricky to remove on these because uh, you've got to bend them up. What I have found is easiest is actually to bend the governor arm on this side here. Bend it round so, so it comes off because you can't tip them up beforehand. So I'm guessing they actually either unbolt it off the manifold altogether to release it or um, you just bend this governor arm up a touch. Let me just give this, this, bend, this bend this arm a touch on this governor arm, just here, we can see, just there. Just twist it round so you can get this, this governor arm off. And when we go to refit it, it won't be quite so much drama. So let me just bend it over, I'll be back in two ticks. Okay, so what I ended up doing, I couldn't actually get in there because on this cover won't move back far enough. Um, so what I've done, I've undone these four bolts off of the manifold itself, and now you can now remove um, it off of the, uh, the governor, off a of carburetor which is a bit easier, like that. There it goes, so it comes off now. And then you can just make sure that when you are gonna put this back on, it goes the right way up, which is gonna be that way, like so. So leave it upright like that. And there's your little carby. Let's get it over to the bench and uh, we'll have this little strip down. You see lots of gunk on here already, bits of oil and what have you. Um, the fuel tap is now running a little bit of fuel but obviously there's not a lot of fuel in here anyway so I need to put, put some more fuel in this tank in fact if I tip it up a touch it might it might help it a little tiny bit get a bit more fuel tipped up because there wasn't a lot in there there you go yeah it's fuel coming through so that's good okay um onto the bench quick little carburetor clean on this one and uh let's get it nice and clean tidy right we're going to go for a uh, little tiny carburetor clean over the shoulder today rather than in front just to switch things up a touch, got a little tiny um, 10 mil to take off the bottom here. Oh, that ain't gonna wanna come off, is it? Hopefully these don't snap, these tend to snap. Just go a bit easy with them, because they're made out of Chinesium. So just gonna loosen the bowl off. Like so, that didn't snap, I thought it snapped for a minute. Off comes the old carby. And as you can see, the fuel is has got not nice clean fuel in there now, but a bit of gunk in there as well. I'll get my little flat-headed driver and I'll remove that little screw because that will need to be cleaned out. And that comes all the way out anyway, no biggie. Get rid of that. That needs to be cleaned. Got a little tiny, 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 tiny. I need to get in here, people. That might not weigh a touch. Let me get my carburetor stuff out. That's it. And I'm not in your way and you're not in my way. How's that sound? That sound all right? There you go. Open my carburetor box up and then I've got a pair of little tiny pliers that my mate Ken sent me. Pull that pin out. Pull the float and needle out. There it goes. Got a little tiny, tiny um, jet in the top here of a carby. Take him out. That's well seated all the way down, so that's no biggie. You've also got a mixture screw one here. This is roughly three, three to nine o'clock, it goes that way. So there's one all the way in. That's half a turn. That's one full turn. One and a half turns. Let's say two turns. If you're not sure, um, write it down a bit of paper. 
take a photograph or do whatever you need to do just to make sure you're getting it right. Okay. We've got this one here, which is your idler, idler bolt. That can come out. Generally about three threads hanging out the other side of it will be fine. Take that out. That goes over that side. And you've got a slow running idle jet here. Just there. I'm going to get my screwdriver in there. Cool. I don't want to come out of there either. There it goes. These are all little tiny brass jets. Just go a bit careful with them. <coughs> little tiny jet there. And that's that little car beat stripped right down. How quick and easy was that? So you've got a little tiny emulsion tube in there also. I don't know if I can get that out. Without causing too many problems. I don't think it wants to come out. It looks like it's pressed in there. I might give it a bit of a wiggle, but uh, apart from that, I'm gonna put some carb spray in there. Now my bowl is actually, my ring's actually off on the bowl, so I can use carburetor spray on this one, <coughs> which I don't normally use, but as there's no rubber components in there, I can. Let me get myself a pair of gloves. I did cut myself the other day, and it's still a little bit sore when the old carburetor cleaner hits it. Mrs. P incidentally is off today. She's off going to get a haircut. Long overdue, bless her heart. It's been doing her head in. Just make sure there's not a little rubber seal down inside that and bring that light down. Just want to see if there's a little rubber seal in there. I don't think there is. It doesn't look like it. I'm always a bit conscious if I'm using um, carburetor fluid on, uh, on rubber components. So I'm just gonna put my quite relatively big file through the emulsion tube down the bottom here, give it a bit of a wiggle, wiggle it just a little bit. See if I can't just get it to loosen up. Now that's pressed in. So sometimes by removing that emulsion tube, actually gonna be doing more damage. So I'm gonna put carburetor spray straight down the head of that emulsion tube. Straight down in there. We've got a couple of holes here to do. One down through the center. Comes out with a slow running jet. One just there. Comes out the bottom. That was in my chops. One down through the main feed. One down in there. That comes out of that little tiny fuel mixture screw we took out. And that's it, car be cleaned. It didn't want a lot. That's it done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna air compress that off. I've also got a little tiny jet here to file out, this one here. Just run my files through it. I'm a cleaner. Put it on top. Yeah, that's running pretty well. Let's get it right on the edge, so I can bend my straw around. Yeah, that's running, we like that. That's all running, got a little tiny jet hole here to do as well. Which is plugged, yeah, it's plugged. That ain't doing nothing, a little tiny hole in that one. Tiddly little hole in that little tiny jet there. That's in the pickup, so we want that to work. So I think my smallest file, which is that one, it's gonna go through there. Yeah, there you go. Oh, a big lump of something come out then. Give out a file. Now, when we put stuff in there, it should come out the other side now. It wasn't a minute ago. I can see the hole. There you go. It wasn't doing that a minute ago. Right, quick little blow from this carburetor just to blow the stuff out and um, we'll reassemble it. Okay, just try to change your battery in the old, uh, the old camera. So, uh, bowl's been cleaned out, it's relatively well. It hasn't come up brilliant, but it's come up better than what it was, okay? Um, the, float, so the float is fine, no problems there. The needle is good as well, no problems on the needle. So, it's all been... Um, cleaned and what have you, best that I can. Um, so I'm gonna put the floating needle in first. So grab your, grab your needle, 
goes that way around and sits on this, this little tiny hook here, sits on that little tiny tab on the float like so. And then just hold it in place, slip it down into its, into its position. Should be there, get your little float pin. That float looks rem remarkably upside down to me. I don't think it is, it might be, yeah, it is. Let's try that for size. God, that's fiddly with gloves on. You know, I think I might have been right the first time. Yeah, there was. No, it wasn't. It looked upside down. I don't think it actually is. I think it's actually right. Yeah, it is right. I was right the first time. It looked like it was upside down to me. But it's not. So let's put the pin in. There it goes. Come on, Mr. Pin. There it goes. That's him. Blow test. That's working, we like that. Uh, then we've got a little slow running jet, ain't we? Uh, which is that one there. That goes in, and that's well seated. That's in. And then we had this little kitty here which was two turns coming out of a carby, which went in there. So I want to screw that all the way in. Sorry, my mistake, it goes in there. And that side. Screw it all the way in. So it's well seated. This was between three and nine o'clock, wasn't it? So uh, half a turn, one turn, one and a half turns, two turns. That was there. You've then got your idler screw, which is going to be this one here. And that wants to go into this part of a carby here, over top of a slow running jet, or slow running circuit as it's called. And goes in, and then you want to be about two threads hanging out the side. Give or take two or three threads. Just coming through now. There's one thread, there's two threads, there's three threads. Okay. Happy with that. Got a little tiny jet here, which is one that was blocked. That goes on top of the uh, emulsion tube housing. Screw that in, and again, that was well seated too. Like that. We've then got a little tiny screw here, which went into the carb bleeding screw. Now I'm not gonna do it up too tight because I wanna bleed this screw off a bit later on. So just, just put it in so it's well seated. That'll do. And then get our ring, which sat on the bowl like so. And that's then got to go up onto the carby. We can seat it in the carby first, it makes no odds. Seat it in the carby. Now, because I didn't use no, no carburetor spray, uh, that, that O-ring hasn't expanded. If you use carburetor spray, it'll expand. So just well seat it. Do this little tiny home. Tuck it in. Tuck it in the bed. That's it. Get your carby bowl. This is the important bit now, you've got to remember. So it goes on this wave of carby onto the engine, and I had moved that round to there so I can get my screwdriver in so I can bleed it out. Now with these, do not do them up too tight. I've broken more than I care to remember because I'm just stronger than what I think I am. So just put it on and when it's well seated, literally just, you know, take it up. That's it, enough. Uh, otherwise you'll snap them. I've snapped so many. That's a carburetor now all fully cleaned and done back over to the machine and we get it refitted.
Right, I'll try and show you as much of this as I can, but obviously it's a bit tricky because of the uh, casing that's in the way, okay? So what we now want to do is get your your inlet manifold. It's got to go on that way. So your choke is at the, at the front of a car, at the front of a generator. That slips on, like so. You then, then can hook up your governor, spring and rod. So the spring goes on first, so that's the hardest to do. That's even harder for me to get my hands in here while I try and show you guys at the same time. No easy thing. I might take that manifold back off just whilst I do it. Spring in, and then govern that rod in. It only going one way. Oh, that's all in now. Then we can put our manifold on. Goes on like that. That all sits in there like that. And then you've got those four bolts to do up. Now they're all the same size. So you can't go wrong. Okay. So those four bolts all got to be fed in to representative holes. You might have to just move the, the, the manifold off slightly. Just so you can get the bolts in. Slide them all in. One, two, turn it around, three, four. Offer it up to the, to the engine and just get one or two started. That'll be one about there somewhere. Get that one started, and then you can let go of it, it won't fall down. One of the bolts might fall out there. That's it, now we're on a winner. Oh, that's three. And the fourth one, one you can't see. Right, happy with that. That's all four now running. And now we can just literally just zap them up. Careful, careful. Don't damage nothing. Use a cross method if you have, if you can. The top one seems to be the trickiest because of the angle. The angle bedangle. Quite easy. Right, they're all on. With them on, you can then attach your carby. Now's a good time to hook up your fuel. Go along those pliers. On he goes. Make sure we've got no kinks in it and nothing like that. On that goes. Happy with that. So that's all on. Don't forget your two wires you've got to hook up here. Um, and I have to go back to the video. I think I said brown on the top. I think I have to double check the video. Um, I think it was brown on the top because the black came off first. That's what I want to go with. I seem to remember. But if not, just check your video. A little black wire here, which we're going to give you no room at all to put that on. And get hold of it, offer it into place. You might have to link it up with a carby as well with the throttle. Can't give you no room on that one at all. Let's get the carby through. Line your bolts up on your carburetor first as well. Well, that was a silly idea. Why don't I give you an extra, an extra three millimeters of cable would have been nice. Just lift your, your panel up. That'll all then fit in. We can then put your carby on flat side. Goes on the bottom. Now's a good time to check to make sure your choke is working, which it is, okay? You've then got um, a couple of uh, 10 mil nuts to put on, which will hold your carby in place and hold your front of your panel down. That one there. That one there. And then we have another 10 mil, which went over this far side just here, somewhere. Near this end, it was somewhere in there. 
hold your panel on. Like so. Little air filter just sat in there, didn't it? And then we had a front cover case. Which went in there like that. And then we had two little tiny flathead screws, which then held all of that front panel on as well. Now, I haven't even checked to see if electrics work on this machine yet. If they don't work, then I'm pretty much stumped. I don't do electrics. I've always said that. I'll have a go at it, you know. I'll, have a, I'll, have, I'll investigate is what I'll do, but generally it comes to electrics, I'm sort of finished. Right, let me just take it off a of zoom and bring it back to a bring it back to a normal size. Let me grab my uh, a, uh, an electric appliance. We'll go for my jigsaw. That's what I tend to use for testing because it's, it's one thing that doesn't jump up in the air. <clears throat> I've got some petrol mix and I've mixed it at 40 to one, no 50 to one because it's summertime, bigger pardon. So let's put a bit more juice in there. It's a little bit in there, it's not a lot though. Some fresh juice going in. That's going to be about just a, just about a quarter of a tank. That's going to be, but it'd be enough for us to test the machine, <clears throat> which is good. Put the little cup in. Put the cap on. But don't forget, I got this out out of a tip, so um, it might have been thrown out because one, it didn't start, or two, because the electrics packed up on it, but. This will do someone if it runs and has no problems. This will do someone for camping or what have you. I'm just going to remove this rag out from underneath. So I'm going to be checking for fuel leaks in a little while. So first thing I'm going to do is we'll turn the fuel on. Have a little peek inside to make sure I've got no leaks. I'm going to get my flathead screwdriver back. So now I just want to bring some, make sure I've got fuel coming down here from that little tiny hole that I drilled in the side. I can still turn that little tiny flathead driver. Yeah, dropping fuel down lovely. There you go, a bit of fuel. So now we've got a bit of fuel. So now we're going to, to have, a, have a quick little start up, see if it'll start off its own back. It wasn't before. I haven't changed the plug or anything like that, so we'll have a little look, see what happens. Put it on to choke, turn it on, see what happens. <laughs> Sometimes it'll take a little while just to get, get the fuel down on these. Okay, let's have the plug out. I'll put another plug in. The plug in there is not new. And the spark wasn't brilliant. Let me go and grab a new new plug there is fuel on there there is fuel on there so let's get a new ngk plug for that no telling how old it was i might just give that fuel chance just to get down down to the head or down to the carby it may be a fuel a fuel tap problem as well or maybe you just don't want to run Brand new plug. See if that makes any difference. There you go. Does it power?
a little doozy. But yeah, I think also a bit of a clean in there, a bit of contact cleaner in there. Um, but new plug, carburetor clean, and away she went. Let's see if it starts its own back again with no choke. No, it likes to choke. Or turn it on, Mick, that'll help. Yeah, baby. Happy as a pig in pup. Boom, and there you go, that's how you do it. Nice little camping leisure um, generator that was only destined for one place to be crushed and recycled or put into landfill. Um, plucked out by myself, giving a new lease of life, quick little carburetor clean, a new spark plug, and away it all went. Um, I do believe these little generators, in my experience with them, is when you turn that fuel on, you just have to wait a minute, just let that fuel run down. It is all gravity fed. Once it runs down and you, and you pull it over a couple of times, they, they start pretty well. It doesn't hunt either, which is even fantastic. And it powers a nice little, that, that little um, jigsaw uh, uh, drill thing is about 550, 600 watt, and it powers that with ease. So it'll probably power my grinder as well if I asked it to. Um, so super, super happy. Um, not a lot more else I can do with that machine. It can just go straight out. I'm happy with that. So, and with a current situation of what's going around the world and no foreign travel at the moment, lots of people are taking the easy option and to camp and to go around um, the UK and having little weekends away. So it should sell pretty quick, I would think. Um, we shall see. But anyway, I'm super, super happy. It didn't cost me a lot of money and it cost me next to nothing to repair it as well. And it's now up and running and running as it should do. And that's exactly how we do it here in the Mixed Mower Shack. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told why I've done a video or two on my satellite wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But until people don't forget, much more importantly, take it easy.